Hey folks, it's Dan Tabar of uh, At A Montage. I am uh, wearing my specs today, my old man glasses, because we're gonna be programming. This is the third section of the mini series of how to get started with the At A Montage Virtual Matter game development platform. So let's dig in right away. To get started, as always, it is going to the atamontage.com website and hit this make montage up in the corner, get through the maker sign up and create your first montage, which is for free. And that's when you're gonna get one of these. Here, you can certainly go in here and play or edit your, your montage in the browser. But if you want to actually script, you have to have the native client for the platform. And that's going to be here on the website again. You go back and go to downloads. You can get the native client right here. So stable build is what you want. Tap on that, double click on the zip, get the installer going. This is a warning that'll go away eventually. Install anyway. It's a small program because this is just the client that will allow you to stream this virtual matter to your desktop here on Windows. Mac and Linux uh, native clients are coming soon as well. Paste your URL to your montage in here. So let's go to your portal again and you have a created montage that you again can create three of these for free. So and then you can hit the share button. Share will give you that URL that you can just go back to the native client here and paste that in. And now you'll be in your own montage. This is your 3D space in the cloud. I have some crazy stuff going on in here. So let me move to a different area that isn't so crazy. So I will find a spot here that we can start doing some fun scripting in. This is Again, only possible in the native client. So let's show you how that works. There's a couple of things I want to point out here. There is a script running on the client side, which is what you're what you're looking at here, and also on the server side. And the server is where most of the simulation and the, the actual gameplay and so on is, is running there. There is some stuff that runs on the on the client side, and this is an important thing to know that some things you want to have only on the client and on the server. This is a high level concept. Let's add a emoji. Hmm, I don't know, savoring food. Nice. This guy is just gonna be a dummy object that we can use for our initial scripting here. So I'll make them a little smaller. The hierarchy server will allow you to look at all the things that are in the scene on the server side. Again, there is a client hierarchy as well, but you don't usually have to worry about that so much. The server is where uh, most of the simulation and the, and the world representation is. And we have this emoji savoring food. These are objects that are in the, the hierarchy and some of them have things under them. Each object has components. And since we've created this with this ad asset, it actually has a voxel renderer and a voxel data thing. If I remove one of these or just disable them, it will stop rendering that voxel stuff. This is where we want to add now a script, right? Call it driller. The Lua console is always down here in the left corner. You can always go in here and get the errors. And there's a console here. You can actually enter your own commands that run on either on the server or the client. Again, there's two Lua states running. The thing to do ahead of time also is to go just get VS code download. It is a free open source IDE. Search for Visual Studio Code download, download it here. It is free forever. It is something that integrates really nicely with our tools. The native client will actually detect when you have it installed. We have this guy now. We want to we want to script this script that we have added to him, this script component. This is the one we want to open now. As soon as we open that, we have Visual Studio Code here. This is actually an expanded version called Cursor. You can get this at Cursor AI. I'll show you why this is uh, interesting in a, in a minute. But let's say Drill Lua has been opened here. You can actually see all the other all the other scripts that are here. So these scripts are on your local machine running in that client. And whenever any of these get changed by you editing them, the client immediately detects that and sends it to the server and it starts running on the server as well. So this is a very fast way to iterate on your gameplay and your assets and uh, any scripts you have running in your montage because whatever you change here immediately gets updated before you even uh, manage to alt tab back to the native client. So here as an overview, we have the self, which is the object that this is attached to. And there's a start function and there is an update function. This is how simple any script is in uh, at a montage. So the start one runs once when the object is created and the update runs every update frame. This is as simple as it gets. If you want to have something happen every frame, you put it in the update. That's exactly what we're going to do. So and let's say we want to drill, right? Like this is driller subtract capitalize correctly. Subtract. Nice. And then we want to subtract which object it's going to be self object. And then we want to run this operation, this voxel operation. So you'll see as soon as I hit save here, it'll immediately be detected by the client and sent to the server and the server reloads and we can just immediately. So you'll see, boom, I barely had time to um, alt tab back to the client where, before the server had already reloaded this stuff. So this script is supposed to do something. Let's see what, what happens when I actually put this in the ground. Yep it will uh, immediately drill <laughs> its shape in the ground here. And this is uh, my voxel operation is there doing every every frame. So we can have this guy tunnel a tunnel through the ground. Whoop. 
and come out here. I can all add another thing, like rotate me is another line of code I can add here to this driller. So here, I will just paste it in here. It's very simple, self transform. Rotation gets added to based on delta time. So we're adding a little bit of a rotation each time uh, based on the time that has passed since the last update. So hit save. And you will see that this guy is rotating very slowly. Let's go back and tweak that. Let's do 30 times. Whee! He's rotating now quite nicely. And when I now put him in the ground, you'll see that his tongue is actually <laughs> uh, removing from the ground uh, some voxels there. Very nice. Okay. I can make this a little bigger. Scale him up. He will, he will still be uh, removing his own shape, its own shape from the from the ground as you can see I'm, I'm digging with the tongue around here as silly as that is it is uh, working very nicely this is the simplest possible script you can imagine here two lines of code but they they have a pretty big impact on the um, on the object here and the world right like when i'm moving it through the world it'll actually cause holes to be formed wherever he goes yep <laughs> bonk i uh i made some uh faces in here nice